good morning and a very warm welcome. Welcome to everyone gathered here online this morning. Our celebrations are richer for your part in it. So thank you for being here. There is a reason why I am standing in dim light, so you may not need to adjust your screens. Today is Candlemas, or the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, one of the oldest feast days in the Christian calendar, which marks the end of our Christmas celebrations. Although we cannot celebrate today in our church buildings and in traditional ways, we can nevertheless enter into the spirit of those celebrations, a spirit of thankfulness for the light of Christ that we have been given. There is a tradition where the old candles are gathered together and that the new ones are blessed by the minister. This is a representation of the old candles and the new candles. O oh God, you are the gathering one who calls us into community with one another to love and work, to support and heal. You are the gathering one who calls us into community with all people to bring justice and hope, freedom and truth. You are the gathering one who calls us into community with all creation to live in harmony, to cherish and renew. There will be a few moments before our first hymn for us to light our own candles. The tune may be familiar to you, but the words are different because the words are particularly about the light of Christ. <laughs>
let us say the prayer of approach together. Ever loving God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our selfishness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God, glory to the Father. Be God, be glory forever. Glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To God, be glory forever. Glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. Alleluia. Amen. God of Anna and Simeon, whose law makes known the gift of life, whose love exposes our hardness of heart, by your Spirit, may we receive your faithful word and know your reconciling presence offered for all the world. Through Jesus Christ, the light and the glory of God. Amen. We will now listen to the Gospel reading, which will be read by the Reverend Janet Quick, and then followed by poems in the light of the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to, pre to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. 
She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was to older people that Jesus came, that they might know their place and learn his name, and upset notions of whom God may choose to change the world or celebrate good news. And this they understand who have been told of Sarah who conceived when she was old, and Hannah, who found joy despite her tears, and Naomi, who blessed her later years. With Zechariah, zealous for routine, ensuring what's to come is what has been. They may disclaim an angel's message too, declaring God intends to make things new. Like Simeon, Resigned to failing power, old age might yet become the finest hour. For those who risk false claims that they're deranged, by saying God wants all things to be changed. It is not in the manger Christ must stay, forever lying helpless in the hay. It is by older people Jesus is blessed, who see God's restlessness in him expressed. The story we heard in our Gospel reading today is undoubtedly one of the most poignant in the New Testament. It resounds with us on so many levels, one of which is that profound coming together before God of a new being in the world and two people of old age whose time on earth is coming to an end. This is a story that prophetic insight about the true nature of the infant Jesus was given to the very advanced in years. People who, in current society's thinking, would be thought past it. We might indeed reflect with shame on the way in which older people today are sometimes treated in Britain. They are often undervalued as regards what they could contribute. In the past, and in less developed societies, older people were, and are, treated with more respect and often consulted by family members as having life wisdom. And this is in fact more in line with the biblical view, as our Gospel passage shows. Both Anna and Simeon had a definite purpose in life. Both were on the lookout for the coming of God's kingdom in the shape of a saviour of Israel. They recognised the baby Jesus as the one to bring that fulfilment. How many older people today wilt away because they have no purpose in life? We hear of those in residential homes deteriorating because they have no focus, no function in life. Alternatively, those who have maintained a purpose continue to function well. We think, for example, of the newly elected president in the USA, who is 78. In line with biblical perspectives, a change in our society's attitude to age people is long overdue. God's message to us is that we all have a purpose in the web, the design, of God's kingdom, no matter what our age. God's way is not the world's way. As John Bell's poem tells us, God wants all things to be changed. A poem written by Justin Farley. 
parenting is like carving a sculpture from glass. Too rough and it shatters, too delicate and you leave the edges too jagged and the corners too sharp. Sure to find failure and breed a selfish heart. The sculptor must bear the cuts and bruises if the piece is to become a true work of art. Chipping away small fragments of imperfection, each time a hateful yell or scream provides an examination. Moulding character and values with imperfect hands. There are frequent failures and regretted actions. But you wake each day determined to do the best you can. From experience will come wisdom, and as soon as you become wise, you'll find you're a fool. This thing called parenting has no manuals or fit-alls, and has few hard-written rules. Some days end with a rewarding smile, others with frustrating sighs. But the goal is not friendship or perfection, it's to prepare a child for life. Justin Farley's poem talks about the challenges of being a parent. Just as a sculptor must bear the cuts and bruises if he or she is to produce a work of art, so parents have to take the rough with the smooth in the bringing up of their child. There is no quick and easy fix. And those of us who are parents know this all too well. But it is a job through which we ourselves grow, as the poem says. As soon as you become wise, you'll find you're a fool. We could compare the parenting life to our lives as Christians, in which there is no perfect end in this life, but only a continual state of learning with the help of God's grace, which so often comes in unexpected ways. In the temple that day, 2,000 years ago, the young parent, Mary, learnt something of this hazardous and uncertain nature of parenting. Simeon tells her that the child in her arms will cause her pain. He says, a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mary stands alongside so many parents throughout the ages and today for whom this was and is a reality. Parents whose children die an early death, children suffering from drug addiction or broken relationships, the end is, uh, the list is endless. So Mary's story reveals to us that God's chosen ones had no easier a life than anyone else throughout, but God was with them, and he is with us. Emmanuel. Some words by Siegfried Sassoon. In me, past, present, future meet to hold long chiding conference. My lusts usurp the present tense and strangle reason in his seat. My loves leap through the future's fence to dance with dream enfranchised sized feet. In me the caveman clasps the seer and garlanded Apollo goes chanting to Abraham's deaf ear. In me the tiger sniffs the rose. Look in my heart, kind friends, and tremble, since there are your elements assemble. Siegfried Sassoon's poem invites us to think about time. Time is talked about as of no real significance to the deep inner life of us all. He says, in me, past, present, future meet to hold long conference. Our pasts, our presents and our futures are all equally important. If this seems a little bit weird to you, consider how important for their present well-being thinking about the past is for many older people. This idea of past, present and future being interconnected 
is very biblical in Jewish thought. Just think how many times in the New Testament people questioned who Jesus was. Was he one of the prophets of old, returned to give God's message to them? Do you believe in fate? Simeon says Jesus parents, to Jesus' parents, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that many hearts will be revealed. We know with our hindsight that this came true. Does this mean that Jesus was fated, that he had no choice in the matter? Are destiny and fate the same thing? Again, the Gospels make clear to us that Jesus did have a choice. At his baptism, his temptations, in Gethsemane, choices were present. Jesus chose God's will over and above his own. In our lives as Christians, we have choices to make too. To follow our understanding of God's will for us and how this might be worked out with the help of his grace. In our faith, none of us are alone in all this. We are all part of that bigger picture through time. We are each strands in the tapestry that God was and is weaving. That tapestry known to Simeon and Anna. Amen. Mary and Joseph came to the temple, brought the boy Jesus, offered him there. People were waiting, wanting to greet him, long as they sought him, scarlet for care. Simeon sings, no God prophets blessing, brilliantly gilding dawn of this day. Light in the darkness, never extinguish, light of all nations, light of all Today's prayers are written by Sally Knight. The response to God of love and hope is be with us on life's journey. In these difficult times through which we are living, it is not always easy to focus on all for which we have to be positive and thankful. Help us, Lord, to count our blessings day by day, to rejoice in them and to offer to you our thanks and praise. We thank you that you walk with us, guiding us and guarding us and that you love us as we are. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. The theme of today's reading is hope, and none more so than for Simon, Simeon and Anna, both hoping to see at least signs of the Messiah before they died. Give, give us, Lord, their hope and faith, that we may be able to know your presence with us and to share your love for, for us and for us with others. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. As we may well light a candle on this Candlemas day, may we offer it as we continue to pray for our world, at least now somewhat united by the fight against COVID. Help the nations to work together in further preventing its spread and in the positive moves of sharing the various vaccines, especially 
in those countries which are coping with a multitude of other problems, lack of medical care and equipment, huge populations, poverty, refugees, natural disasters, political unrest and division. So may countries come to mind, so many countries come to mind, and we pray for those and others, for Yemen, Syria, Somalia, India and Brazil, Indonesia and Bangladesh, and the USA. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. Our lives have all been affected by COVID, thankfully for the majority of us in just obeying the lockdown and other restrictions. But we pray for all for whom the pandemic has meant so much. For those who are ill or experience the effects of long COVID, those who have died and bereaved, but so very especially for all frontline workers in the NHS. The physical and emotional strain and stress is plain for all to see. We pray that they may feel your strength surrounding, surrounding and uplifting them, enabling them to cope with the trauma that they faced and to be able to look forward to an easing in the situation. We give thanks for the wonderful progress made in delivering the vaccines or for all who have volunteered to help and those working on the production lines of providing them. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. We pray for those who live in the dark shadows of life, whether or not as a result of COVID. For all, especially women and children, who have been abused in any way, for all who have become victims of slave labour and for the homelessness, the hungry and those desperately worried about their jobs, their security, their loss of self-esteem. Help us to seek your guidance in knowing how to help others in whatever way we can. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. We pray for your church throughout the world, giving thanks for the many and varied ways that people are continuing to worship, whether by the use of technology bringing people together, by small groups socially distanced, or by individuals at home. We know that you hear the prayers of all. We look to the future and pray that whatever changes may lie ahead, they may be for the furtherness of your presence among us. We pray for Bishop Libby, for all clergy, and especially for Sarah and Janet, and we give thanks for all who serve our, serve our own three parishes in whatever way. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. Finally, we pray for ourselves and each other, for our three communities brought together in Christ, for all who know for all known to us who are in need of our prayers, for whatever they may, their need may be, we bring them to mind in these moments of peace. Loving God, help us to live today and every day with Simeon and Anna's faith, that with gentleness and courage we may give freely to others, as you have given freely to us. God of love and hope, be with us on life's journey. Amen. The greeting of peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of God be always with you, and also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another by maybe waving or raising our hands to our screens. Father, in Christ there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the offering of your church and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen.
Let us pray. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our gracious God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord, who shares your eternal splendour and was presented in the temple. He was revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel, that all peoples might find him, the light of the world. And so, with angels and archangels and all who live in the light, we proclaim your glory, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of truth and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Lord of Light, through your Son, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come freshly to us now, Lord God, and as we offer you our lives, renew us in your gifts, the gold of our potential, the incense of our hopes and prayers, the myrrh of healing for our pain. Feed us and nourish us, that we may grow in the life of Christ, and fill us with your Spirit that we may overflow with your love and transform the world with your glory. Amen. And so we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
And so we say together the prayer of commitment. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and pre present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. So we sing our final hymn. May we who hold these kindling flames be Christ's body for the world, to the promise in the promise of creation restored, and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Sacred Spirit, rest upon you and all whom you love, both living and departed, now and always. And the words for the candle mass responsory. Jesus, born of Mary, we have seen your glory. 
the glory revealed to all the nations. As Simeon and Anna recognised you in the temple, may we recognise you in all we meet. As we turn from the crib to the cross, may we live to embody your hope. You send us to serve in your name. May we shine with the light of your love. Amen. And let us blow out our candles. <laughs> 